For an upcoming project, I'm going to need some form of stabilisation. The model in question has a reputation for being not only difficult to fly, but also prone to tip stalling. I think I'm going to need all the help that I can get. Talking to my friend and test pilot Steve at our local club, he suggested I take a look at the Hobby Eagle range of gyros. I think there's four or five different ones that you can get, and I selected this one as it suits my needs. This is a six axis gyro. Three axes then will be the roll, pitch and yaw, and the other three are the accelerometers, so sensing the change in each of those directions. Also this one doesn't need any programming card, it can be programmed just using the little set button on there. It will work either PWM or SBUS, and I'm going to be using it with a radio link receiver and we'll see if that SBUS is compatible. Also in the box that it comes in we have a big capacitor here to help with any smoothing that's needed. I'm not sure that I'm going to need that but it's nice to see it in the in the package there and also in here the various connecting wires. Clearly if it's operating in SBUS we'll only need one of those connections for PWM mode you need to put a connection on each of the receiver outputs. As always, some sticky pads provided, but there's no manual. There's a QR code provided on the box where you can download the manual to your computer or even to your phone. I've gone ahead and downloaded that and it's very comprehensive. We'll take a look at that. Let's move on now and set it up just on the bench here and connect it to my radio link receiver and check that the S bus is functioning. The first thing we're going to need to do is access the receiver menu so that we can change it to S bus. It's PWM by default. To access the menu, we need to press and hold the button and turn the power on. Now we can set the functions as per the table here. So the first function we need to change from solid red to solid blue for S bus. The other thing that I'm going to do is to change the mode channel. By default that's channel 5. On my Multiplex Fun Cub, which I'm going to be trying this in, I already have channel 5 allocated to the flaps. I've set up then on my transmitter channel 7, therefore we're going to need to change the mode to flashing green up here. Let's go ahead now and uh, do those things. To get into the receiver settings then, press and hold the set button whilst I power on my bench power supply. And then we wait for that to go solid violet and now it's flashing through the different options. We need to be back on option one. So there it's flashing eight times and it will be back to one. Now that it's on one I press the set and as we can see it's on red. We have to do this fairly quickly, green, blue. Once it's on blue for S bus, we just leave the button and then it flashes and goes back into its little routine. So now we have to wait until it gets to number five. We go through the options now until we get to the flashing green. And then we wait. And now it should be set up on channel seven. Let me switch off now. If I now turn on my transmitter. Welcome to OpenTX. And let's connect a test servo to say channel one, which will be the ailerons. Switch on. Zero volts. That was its little gyro calibration routine. It's important not to move the receiver when it's in that mode. The blue indicator on the radio link indicates that it's in the S bus mode. And now if I move my aileron function, we have the control there. The red light here is the mode. So red is indicating that there's no gyro function enabled. If I now move my mode switch on the transmitter, 
to the medium position, this is now the normal function. If we move the gyro in this direction, we get almost nothing. If we move it from side to side, obviously for the aileron control, that's correct now. And finally, if we flip it into the third mode, we get a flashing violet there, which is the auto level function. If we bank the aircraft, then the position of the aileron will stay until the bank has been corrected and then go level again and then back to normal. Now we know then that the SBUS function is working perfectly from the radio link receiver and that we've got at least an output on the aileron. We move our test servo now to output 2, which will be the elevator. I move the elevator on my stick, nothing happening there. And once again, the control. Lastly, the yaw or rudder function, if we plug it into there. On my transmitter, the rudder function there. No gyro. All is looking good. That then concludes the receiver setup. Having gone through the receiver setup and made sure that that's all working, let's take a look now at the setup menu. To get into the setup menu, as it says, we just press and hold the button for two seconds until the LED starts flashing white. The same process is used to select these different options and the defaults are marked by the asterisk here. The wing type standard, that's fine for me. The orientation, I'm going to be using it flat. The flight modes, as we saw, position one is with the gyro off, two is normal, position three is level or auto balance or even panic mode. The settings here are to change the direction of the servos. We need to install the unit before we can check the gyro directions. We have calibrations there. You can set the maximum bank angle here and the servo frequency if you've got some uh, higher speed servos. And the gain, that is the amount of movement of the control surfaces, which is by default the medium and a factory reset. Let's go ahead now then and install the gyro in the plane and then we can check that the surfaces are moving in the correct directions. This is how I've installed it in the model. The arrow needs to point forwards and then it needs to be as close to the center of gravity as you can get it. When the main wing is on my C of G is around here somewhere. But, uh, it's there or thereabouts. One interesting thing is that uh, these two connections here are for the flaps on channels 5 and 6 on my receiver and they still output the PWM signal even though I have it set as SBUS which is interesting and uh, very grateful for that. This wire here then being output 1 which is the aileron control and then we have the elevator and rudder. To hold that in place, I've actually 3D printed a little platform that it's sitting on. That keeps it nice and firm, it's not going to move around. Next thing we need to do then is to power it up and connect the wings and to ensure that the servos are moving in the correct direction when the gyro is operating. This then will be the final checks before going and flying it for real. My transmitter I've set up with the three position switch and also now on a slider or rotary switch here, I can adjust the gain of the gyro as well. Power up the plane. Remembering to keep it still until the gyro has initialized, which it has by now. First thing then, a sanity check that the control surfaces are moving in the correct direction. So that's right stick, right elevon up, 
You can see the elevator there, down is up and vice versa, and finally the rudder to the right and to the left. That is all normal. Now we're not going to see very much in the normal mode on the gyro, as it is only the momentary correction of the surfaces. And if we, if we move the plane around, we can clearly see that the surfaces are all moving. Question is, are they moving in the correct direction? That can be more easily seen if we now switch into the level mode. And in the level mode, it will attempt to right any problems with the aircraft. To check that the direction is correct, any input that we make, the control surface that it's affecting should move in the same direction to counter that movement. So if I move this up, the further I move it up, the further the surface deflects and vice versa. Similarly, if we're looking at the elevator, if I pitch the nose down, it corrects by tilting up there. And if I pitch the nose up, the surface moves down. And finally, the rudder yaw the plane to the right or to the left. The rudder moves in the same direction at, to counter that movement. The final thing I'll show you then is the effect of the gain control. At the moment, it's in its maximum position. If I bank the plane, you can see the amount of movement there. As I move the gain down, the control surface follows to the point where there is no control. So effectively, with the gain control, I've switched the gyro function off. As I increase it again, you'll see that it goes up. That's the detente for the middle range, and that's full. Therefore, in flight, I should be able to adjust that to a suitable amount of, of gain to control the aircraft without overcorrecting it. That's all then for this video. The next time out we'll be flying this and testing the gyro out for real. Thanks for watching.